week 11 of the fantasy baseball season and he has a few pitches I look to buy and trade for this week the first guy Logan Gilbert of the Seattle Mariners that said Gilbert he was on this list a few weeks ago and right now he's been getting hit hard the last two out of three outings as Gilbert but I like the promise still with Gilbert the strikeouts are still solid on the season he's been up the long ball and that's been the problem over the last few outings but I still like where he can finish towards the end of the year so right now while he's struggling I think he's a pitcher of fantasy only should go out there and get on the season 74 innings 4-4 four four record 81 Ks a 4.38 ERA a 1.03 whip and 7 quality starts but over the last couple weeks like I mentioned 10 innings 1-1 one one record 8 strikeouts a 6.30 ERA a 1.30 whip and a quality start so Gilbert on the middle of the pack type of Seattle Mariners the team right now Division, I know has some good hitting teams like the Texas Rangers and the Houston Astros, but Gilbert is a solid pitcher, one of their top prospects over the last few years and came up last year. And just like I said, the last two out of three outings have been tough for him versus good hitting teams. May 30th versus the Yankees, four innings, got the loss, seven hits, five runs, a walk, four Ks in that one. Then June 6th at the Padres, who have great hitters, but are just struggling for whatever reason this season. Seven innings, got the win. Three hits, a run, two walks, six Ks, a quality start. And then June 11th, he got rocked in that one at the Angels. Three innings, got the loss in that game. Eight hits, six runs, two Ks in that one. So right now, the last few outings have been a problem, like I mentioned, for Gilbert. Giving up the long ball and giving up hard contact. And it's been three solid hitting teams. He's versed, no doubt about it, over the last few weeks. But I think he could turn things around is Gilbert. And right now, well, he hasn't done much the last few weeks. He's a pitcher I would go out there and buy this week to think of back-end hitter to a lower-level pitchers could get the deal done. The pitchers, Jesus Lazardo of the Miami Marlins. So Lazardo, former top prospect a few years ago in the Oakland Athletic System. And then, for whatever reason, the A's gave up on him and he was a controllable starting pitcher contract-wise to the Miami Marlins. So on the year... 77 and two thirds, five and five record, 89 Ks, 4.17 ERA, a 1.27 WHIP, and six quality starts. So this Miami Marlins team, they always figure out how to develop pitchers, but they just never hold on to these guys as their contract years come up. And Lazardo's another one. Yuri Perez, obviously in that rotation. Sandy Alcantara, who's been an ace for them, even though this season he's having a down year. They always find pitching here as this Miami Marlins team, but the last couple weeks here has been a struggle for Jesus Lizardo. 16 and third, 1 and 2 record, 19 Ks, a 6.06 ERA, 0.86 whip, and a quality start. So right now, while well, he hasn't done much over the last few outings here as Lizardo, he's definitely a guy who would go out there and make a deal for. And I don't think you got to give much at all. One of your utility hitters. Or well, middle infielder who's decent could get the deal done, I believe. June 1st versus the Padres, five and a third, got the loss. Four hits, five runs, a walk, eight Ks. June 6th versus the Royals, a great ball game. Seven innings, got the win. Two hits, a run, eight Ks, a quality start. And then June 12th at Seattle, he got bombed in that one. Four innings, got the loss. Six hits, five runs, a walk, three Ks. So Lazardo, we know he's got great K upside. And he's a pitcher that's a good lefty, one of the better lefties, I believe in the major leagues where there's not many great ones anymore in the major leagues so anyway Lazardo right now a couple bad games at the last three outings I know he's got a good outing coming up June 18th at the Nats that they're one of the worst hitting teams in the league and we'll see if he could bounce back there so right now Lazardo's been struggling over the last three four weeks of the season he's a perfect buy low candidate because I think he could turn things around and this one on offense they're starting to hit the baseball a little bit as well to give their pitchers some run support. The next pitcher, Tanner Bybee of the Cleveland Guardians. I've been big on Bybee pretty much the whole season here, and he's been solid for the most part on the year. Still 48 in the third, 2-2 two two record for the rookie. 45 Ks, a 3.91 ERA, a 1.24 whip, and three quality starts. But over the last couple weeks, it hasn't been great. 1-1 one one record, 14 innings. 11 Ks, a 6.43 ERA, a 1.64 whip. So right now, Location's been an issue a little bit for Bybee. I know he's not going deep into ball games. He's pretty much been a five, six inning pitcher at best for fantasy owners. But I think this stuff is legit by Bybee. He's got that sneaky fastball that gets by hitters. And he goes out there and he's got decent secondary stuff as well. So right now, while he's been struggling over the last few games, he is Bybee. He's a perfect buy low candidate. And believe it or not, he's still available right now in 47% of leagues. If he's on your waiver wire, 12, 14 team leagues, you definitely go out there and get him. And if he's not, I think you give up a low impact bat 
in a deal, and the Bybee owner might give him up, especially the last two out of three outings. We haven't seen much from him. June 1st at Minnesota, five innings in that one, no decision. Six hits, three runs, a walk, six Ks in that ball game. June 7th versus the Red Sox, five innings, got the win. Four hits, a run, two walks, two Ks in that one. And June 13th at the Padres, they hit him good in that one. Four innings, got the loss. Eight hits, six runs, two walks, three Ks. So Bybee, he got rocked early in that first couple innings, giving up five runs, but he already a little bit wrote the ship at San Diego, which is good to see from a young pitcher. Getting off to a bad start, but at least finishing off decently. So right now, after a bad couple outings out of the last three games, he is by the, I think he's a by low candidate. And like I said, he's still out there on waiver wires in 47% of leagues. If he's out there on the wire, pick him up. And if you could get him in a deal, which I think you can, and not have to give up much, this would be a time to do it. The next pitcher, Bryce Elder. The Atlanta Braves elder, I know he's pitching over his head the first few months of the season here, but the last two or three outings, he's definitely struggling and come back to it. But obviously, he's on a Brave team, one of the best teams in the league. He's always going to get run support. I know he don't throw the baseball hard, and I know his strikeout numbers aren't really that good, not even averaging one strikeout in an inning, but he's getting the ground balls, he's getting the outs, and over the last couple weeks, he just hasn't pitched well. So right now, well, the numbers have come down a little bit here for El, but this is a good time to buy him all because people probably think he's going to slump a little bit. He's older now where he doesn't have a lot of major league experience under his belt, obviously. Only in his second year where well, last year he only pitched 54 innings on the season, 77 innings, 4-1 record, 65 Ks, still a solid 2.69 ERA. 1.18 whip and seven quality starts in the last couple weeks here. Like I said, teams are starting to figure him out a little bit more. With more film on him and being a little more patient at their at bats. 11 in the third, 1 and 1 record, 9 Ks, a 7.15 ERA, 1.32 whip. So right now, I think Elder will be fine. His next outings versus the Colorado Rockies, that ball game will be in Atlanta as well, where I think he'll bounce back. That Rocky team strikes out a lot as well and has trouble putting the ball in play but anyway the last few outings like i said haven't been all that great for elden this is why he's a good buy low candidate may 30th at oakland seven in the third five hits a run three walks five days of quality start june 6th versus the mets wasn't the greatest outings he got off to a horrible start giving up four runs in the first few innings but then bounced back six innings got the win four hits four runs two walks eight days and then June 11th versus the Nats, he got hit hard in that one. Five in the third, got the loss. Eight hits, five runs, a walk, a K. So right now, Elder, I know the last two games, he hasn't pitched well and he got off to bad starts. But just like Bybee, at least, he wrote the ship a little bit and worked through trouble. And he still went five, six innings in those ball games. That's always a good sign for a young pitcher to overcome adversity and still go deep into ball games and eat innings. So right now, while Elder struggled the last two outings here, I think he's a buy low candidate, and I think he's still got to give up a decent bat, but not pay the price you would have a few weeks ago. And the fifth and final pitcher I look to buy and trade for this week here is Chris Bassett of the Toronto Blue Jays. I know four or five weeks ago I said to sell him high because he was pitching over his head, and then those numbers weren't going to be sustainable, especially in that division in the AL East, which is the best division in baseball, in my opinion. And in that stadium over there in Toronto where the ball really flies out. So now Bassett's down to earth. But I think the numbers could be a little bit better than they are overall. On the season, 7-5, and five, 85 innings, 75 Ks, a 4.02 ERA, a 1.13 whip. And already 10 quality starts on the season, which is amongst the league leaders this year. And the last couple weeks here for Bassett, 2-1 and one record, 18-2 and two thirds, 18 Ks, a 4.82 ERA, a 1.02 whip and 2 quality starts. In the time, so Bassett, like I said, this time of month, the team starts to get their hitting going a little bit with the nicer weather. And that's just what happened to Bassett at Camden Yards a couple nights ago. Still going out there, and he's still pitching good baseball overall on the season. So the last few games here for Bassett, June 2nd, at the Mets' former team, pitched the gem. Seven and two thirds, three hit ball, no runs, eight Ks, a quality start. June 7th versus the Astros, eight innings. Got the win in that one. Four hits, two runs, five Ks, a quality start. And June 13th in Baltimore, like I said, after two outstanding outings for Bassett. Then he got bombed in that one. Three innings, got the loss, 11 hits, eight runs, a walk, five Ks. So the last four outings, two great ones, and two horrible outings for Bassett. And that's the problem with him at times, inconsistencies. And if you get that out of him, I still would take that chance 
getting two good outings and two bad outings. Pitching's hard to find this season in fantasy baseball. And at least bats that we know could eat innings, go deep at the ball games, and help fantasy owners more times than not. So right now, after coming off a horrible outing versus the Orioles, this is a time to buy him low. Because if he goes back on a good outing or two again, his basket, he would have to pay a higher price. That's a few pitches I look to buy and trade for here in week 11 of the fantasy baseball season.